Well, apologies for that uh, technical glitch on the behalf of the stream. We apologize for that. Thank you, for Nibbler, for pointing that out. Um, apparently, one of the wires on the setup is no longer with us, so that has been replaced. It's quite a slide there from Magic Lager. We were just discussing um, before we realized that the sound wasn't being broadcasted that Merchi Lager has swapped for the first ever time. Um, from his BMW M6 that he's been his, the entire season, he's swapped into the Bentley, hoping to have a bit more luck in the Bentley. So that makes for two on the grid now, of course, alongside Galactic Skull 2. Um, and this man only took his first podium last week. That's really bizarre to say. Uh, considering the season he's had, he's had the pace to win every race, but it's just never come to fruit. Then we were discussing two familiar faces which have rejoined us. You may see Francis Jessica is back on the grid alongside Blizzard. These two... Um, we're in the NORL F1 2017 series. Oh, as Blizzard has got quite the connection. Um, sorry, Francis Jessica has got quite the connection. Uh, that will be interesting to see how that plays out in the race. Uh, but Merchi Lago on pole by a whopping 2.1 seconds at the moment ahead of last week's winner, Ketchy. Um, Chaz are up in P4, VSR Blizzard. Uh, up in P5. Nemesis just getting out of the way, coming out of the pit lane, but then almost interferes with Merchilago's lap as well. Does Merchilago make the corner? No, he doesn't, so that could be a steward's investigation. Um, did Nemesis Racing impede him there? We'll have to find out. But merchilago has gone for a spin, and his follow up lap isn't going to happen, but that's all right for him. He's got a 2.8 second buffer at the moment. And uh, Kedchi will be the first to see if he can challenge that and see if he could take away the pole position from Merchi Lago. He took the win off him, remember, this time last week. So he'll be aiming to do something of a similar blow coming up to the start-finish line. What time is it for Kechi and the Merchi and the Mercedes? The line coming up right about now. And Kechi takes pole position by 3.2 seconds. That's eight seconds ahead of third place. What a stonker of a lap. Now, it's very possible that there's been no valid laps in the session yet, but he was 2.8 seconds off pole just a moment ago, and now a whopper 3.2 seconds out of absolutely nowhere for Kechi shows that this man's finally starting to show his stride, and will Merchilaga be able to respond? Francis Jessica up in P3 still lagging all over the place, and I, I really hope that connection sorts itself out before the start of the race as Beamer Black moves his Lamborghini Hurricane up into P2, 2.7 seconds slower than Kedgy. Merchilago will, of course, start a new lap because he didn't have a valid lap the last time around. Ah, a little drink break because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be shouting a lot. Uh, during this race, especially with that connection of Francis Jessica. I hope that, uh, like I say, I really hope that clears itself up before the start of the race. But this man on absolute fire at the moment, Kedchi, really um, throwing it out there here for Imola. What a stonking drive and showing that he could be one to take the championship this year, but it's not going to happen on this lap, especially as he goes around and uh, gets in a bit too hot. Meanwhile, Mark Shark has brought the gap under two seconds, but no one is able to keep up with Kedgy at the moment. Where has this lap time come from Kedgy? We knew he was fast, but uh, absolutely crazy racing. Yeah, Nibbler says hopefully more shouting than Spain. That's very true. Um, but I, I want to rephrase that to hopefully more shouting for the lead than Spain. Uh, because the race at Spain wasn't that bad. Um, in the F1 series, but uh, of course, he, well, you you was there. You saw what happened for the lead. Um, I'm hoping that Kedge finds himself in the sand trap, doing a little 180 just to get going again. Mark again has got it under two seconds, but that is the closest anyone has come. Will Beamer Black reduce that gap any further as he runs up to the line behind the white Renault? He finds an improvement of six temps, but it's not much. Next coming up to the line, I believe that was Kevin Jacobs across the line. Kevin Jacobs. Kevin Jacobs, words, not wanting to come out of my mouth, uh, moves up into P9 ahead of Nemesis Racing. But Kedgy right now has literally gone back in the pit box and said, right, lads, do your best. <laughs> VSR Blizzard will be the next man to come up across the line. The man um, appears to be driving for a new team, VSR, since um, his uh, relative success in the F1 2017 series wasn't quite on the level of KB Killerzone, uh, but had some reasonable success. 
driving for VSR now and uh, does not improve on that lap. Francis Jessica drops down into P6 because Merchi Lago's in P5. Nemesis Racing pops in a lap time, gets himself up into sixth position. And that is qualifying complete. So everyone who's still out on a lap will get the opportunity to complete it. I really wish we could watch Francis Jessica more, uh, but with a connection like that, I really get the feeling it's going to do more harm than good. Chazza uh, in the chat saying he's not enjoying these cars whatsoever. 7.3 seconds off the pace and in pit lane. Galactic Skull 2 is at an absolute shocker as well. 8.1 seconds off. And Kevin Jacobs still that magical 12.2 seconds off pole position. Just shows you the difference in the field here at Imola. So, we are getting ready for the finishing of qualifying. We'll see if anyone improves. Mark the Shark found five tenths of a second. Not really much. Does Beamer Black find anything? Will it be a surprise pull from Lamborghini? It's going to have to be a hell of a lap if it's going to be. And no, he improves and goes just over. Three temps slower than Mark the Shark, but a solid effort up in P3. Merchia Lago's out on his final lap as well. VSR Blizzard's out on his as well. Francis Jessica's lap time has been invalidated for exceeding check limits, so he will not be improving on this lap. Merchia Lago looks like he's going a little bit slower. VSR Blizzard is coming out of the final corner. So he's coming up to the line and we'll see if he can post the time quicker than he is already in P5. Does he find the time? We'll find out right about now. 2.6 seconds, just slower than Murchielago's attempt for P4. Unless Murchielago can improve on this final lap up to the line comes the Bentley. Doesn't look like a very quick one. I could be wrong. No looks can be deceiving. So let's see. Does it put him up on the podium positions? No, it didn't look very fast and it wasn't. So there you go. Mark's actually left the session. Uh, so a disconnection for Mark might drop him to the back of the grid. Kedchi then takes a whopping pole position by 1.3 seconds ahead of Mark. That is one of the best performances we've seen in Kedchi in the NORL series. He will be ahead, starting ahead of Beamer Black for P3. Good stonking effort for that man as well, who recently took his first podium. Merchie Lago will have it all to do if he wants a podium position to get ready for this. VSR Blizzard will start his debut from P5 in the Mercedes ahead of Nemesis Racing, who took the win in round one. Francis Jessica uh, will have an interesting connection going into the race, but hopefully that won't affect the racing too much. He'll be starting ahead of Chazza for P8, Galactic Skull P9, and Kevin Jacobs brings up the rear of the grid for this 10-car race, which will be a rolling start, of course. So it will be a drag race between Mercedes and Renault down to the line, and you'd like to think the Bentley in P4 will have the pace to challenge as well. So we get ready for 30 minutes of Imola for round number five of the Nemesis Online Racing Project Cars 2 FIA GT3 Series. And leading the championship is Kedshi. So he has the, the, a very good chance to extend his championship lead over Mark um, as well. So we'll be seeing if Mark can pull that out today. So here we go, get ready for racing. 30 minutes here at Imola. It's going to be Mercedes versus Renault to the line up to turn one. Who is going to be the victor of that particular battle? You hear the klaxons sounding. Lights out and away we go. Who got the better start? The Renault got a good one, but I think it's the Mercedes who's pulling away slightly. Renault still looking for an opportunity around the outside. Is he going to be able to do it around the outside? It's very doubtful. And Kedji will lead into turn one. Beamer Black under a bit of pressure. Murchielago trying to make an impression, uh, impression early. A little bit of contact between the Bentley and the Lamborghini, but everyone's got through safely. Meanwhile, Francis Jessica is going for a spin in the background. He's got around and will find himself at the back of the grid at the very start of this race. Kevin Jacobs made two positions off the start. Nemesis race. Racing's drop position, good start for Chazza as well, finds himself up in P6 as it's got to the next section of corners they come and Kedshi gets a storming start. Meanwhile, Merchilaga has found a way past in this uh, very race start and now Merchilaga will be chasing down Mark in the Renner to see if he can challenge the Mark car, the blue and orange in the infield section, a little bit later on the brakes, contact between the Renault and the Bentley once more and down the hill they will come. VSR Blizzard is getting involved with 
Beamer Black in the background there as well. Merchilago showing up red on the screen. That often hints that he has a penalty to serve at some point on this lap. VSR Blizzard getting very feisty with Beamer Black, looking for a way past, darting this way and that way. No way past so far, and he'll have to just hold back through the chicane and see if an opportunity comes to him later on. Meanwhile, though, Merchilago has stopped on the circuit, and uh, it looks like Mark stopped as well. So I think there's been contact between second and third place, and Merchilago's waiting to give the position back to Mark because he's hit him off. That promotes Beamer Black into second, VSR. Uh, Blizzard up into P3, Chazza is there as well, just outside the podium, so it looks like another disastrous race in store for Merchilago. Out the final corner they come, Beamer Black doesn't look like he could get the power down much much, and that's why he's pitting. Looks like damage for the Lamborghini car will rule him out then, and VSR, Blizzard is in P2 on his debut. He'll have to fight off Chazada if he wants to keep second position. Meanwhile, Galactic Score 2 have been fit, starting to close down on Kevin Jacobs just a little bit. Kevin Jacobs will be hoping to have a better race than he did, and we can see three cars in the pit lane on lap one, all for damage. And Kevin Jacobs goes off at the Turn 1-2 complex, which is going to allow Galactic Skull 2, no, because Francis Jessica and Galactic Skull 2 have had a massive accident. We only just caught the end of that, but Francis Jessica and Galactic Skull 2 were nowhere near each other. So I'm very shocked that these two made contact. I'm sure that will be reviewed massively, but those guys were nowhere near each other on circuit, so how did they make contact? There was a good three, four second gap between those two. I'm positive, and I'm just completely, completely blown away. Callum Spencer in the chat's offering me a double chalky chip cookie. Yes, please, definitely. That sounds hella good, as long as it's not chocolate buttons. <laughs> So Barrichello does hit a cold part, as Cal Spencer described it. That's a huge accident. I'm not sure how that's happened. Um, but we did see Francis Jessica have a little bit of connection issues in qualifying. And I'm wondering if that is anything to do with it. Was it a, a classic lag stop? Because Francis Jessica's now retired from the race. Um, I'm really not sure how to call that. I'm not sure what's happened, but Kedchi leads a Mercedes 1-2 at the moment. Dominant performance by Kedchi at the moment. Kedchi trying to hold off Chazza in the background. Nemesis Racing closing in as well, and it looks like BSR Blizzard is starting to pull away. And uh, you can see Merchilago going very slow up the hill again. Looks like he's struggling. And uh, Nibbler wished there was more shouting than there was Spain, but at this moment in time, there's a minimum gap of two seconds between every single car, so not going to be much shouting for the moment. Nemesis Racing picks up a warning for track limits. Nemesis Racing does like he's closing on Chazza a little bit, though. That could be our next big battle. Currently, the second fastest man on track with a 49.8. Kedchi's just in a league of his own at Imola. Dominant performance, three seconds a lap faster than pretty much anyone. What a performance from Ketchy. Really struggled at the start of the season, but ever since he transitioned from the Porsche to the Mercedes, the man has been nigh on unstoppable. Looks like he's going on to take another, another victory here today, if he can bring it home safely. It's a big if. So Nemesis closing in on Chazza quite rapidly now. How will the Audi deal with the Renault? And what is the advantage? for each one of these cars. Little weed from Jazza ahead. Closing in, meanwhile, Kevin Jacobs looks like he's coming under pressure from the Bentley, so another mistake from Kevin Jacobs sees him dropping down the order into the grips of Galactic Skull 2. Nemesis Racing, Valeria Campagnari closing in in the final sector, but it looks like the Renault has got the better of the, um, the, better of the two. When it comes to braking performance, meanwhile, Ketchy is still pulling away from VSR Blizzard. He's getting another second on that lap to give you an idea of how dominant Ketchy is here at Imola. Meanwhile, Galactic Skull 2 then closing in and has found himself a Kevin Jacobs, has found himself a bright blue GTR to go to war with. And we'll see Nissan Power versus Bentley Power, Japan versus Britain down the front straight away. How much will the Bentley be able to close in on that GTR? 
Doesn't look like Slipstream is helping him too much. Gaining, but not a lot. Meanwhile, VSR has found two and a half seconds on Kedshi on this lap. I feel like Kedshi has made a mistake somewhere on this lap. Uh, that's a lot of time to lose. Speaking of lose, Kevin Jacobs goes around and Galactic Skull 2 takes away P5 from the GTR. Unfortunate for Kevin Jacobs. Drops down into P6, but it's uh, still two positions higher than he qualified. Three positions, qual uh, four maybe. <laughs> four positions quite higher than he qualified. Thought he qualified P8, he didn't. P10, that's my mistake. So Nemesis, meanwhile, has got Chazza during all of that chaos up into P3 for the Italian. As the racing comes to a halt for now. And we can keep an eye on the closest gap as we'll take a look and see who is the closest gap. That could be anyone. I honestly think it is Chazza and Nemesis at the moment. <laughs> at least we've got a lovely little posse in the chat who are having fun eating chocolate chip cookies and making comments Nemesis Racing does go wide though out of that corner, goes on the grass that's going to cost him some time too Chazza I might bring the gap under 2 seconds for the first time it's been in a while it's possible but it doesn't look like it will the Audi pulling with that V10 down the straight and just makes up for the the mistake he made. He gets it back in straight line performance. And a Renault clearly not a very good car when it comes to straight lines. The next gap to keep your eye on will likely be Merchilago. Um, it's a big gap, but I assume it's going to come down fairly quickly given the uh, the drivers that are involved. Of course, Merchilago has had the opportunity to win many races. If that man doesn't win a race this season, well then. Then what can you say? Oh, Chaz has gone in the background and Chaz retires manually after that spin. Clearly not happy. We just saw him spin in the background there and uh, immediately uh, immediately leaves the session. And the two up into P4 and everyone else up a position respectively in the background. We to think that Mark qualified second and he's all the way back. 50 seconds off the lead, 56 seconds. You know, Beamer Black has closed up on Merchilago quite a lot on this lap. Beamer Black is closing. It's going to be our closest gap on track, but none of you keeps getting track limit warnings like that. Beamer gets another one. Meanwhile, Imola um, isn't giving us the best race, is it, at the moment? Um, <laughs> there's only so much you can say. We can find things to talk about. If anyone has any questions in the chat relative to NORL and this season and stuff, uh, then we can discuss them. Um, until some racing picks up, but at the moment it's kind of a follow the leader. Uh, Kedshi's pulling away, has pulled them two seconds back on VSR Kedshi. Uh, VSR Kedshi? VSR um, Blizzard once again. And it's, it's just driving away. Nemesis racing in P3 as well, doing a solid job from where he started. Uh, Galactic Skull 2 is in no man's land. Kevin Jacobs is kind of in no man's land at the moment. Uh, and then Merchilaga is closing, but not as quick as you'd like, because he is being closed down himself by Beamer Black. Down into the next corner, does Merchilaga make a mistake? Coming out the final corner, it looks like the Bentley, a little bit of understeer through the final sector. Chocolate chip cookies or chocolate chip ice cream, says Nibbler. Mmm, that's a tough one. It really depends on the situation. It really does depend on the situation. But I'd say cookies. Uh, because you can just we've got a mistake up in the in the up in the front because Kevin Jacobs has gone for another spin. That's a big spin. Well and truly caught in the gravel there. Now he's gotta be careful not to hit Beamer Black and Beamer Black takes well what can only be described as unnecessary avoiding action. Goes off the track. Mark will now pass Kevin as well. Kevin loses three positions in one mistake and uh, game over for Kevin Jacobs it's gone all kinds of wrong in the background there everyone passing that mark that's brought mark back into the fight though so we do have a fight for p6 going on but yeah chocolate chip cookies and ice cream it's it's gonna be cookies for me because I mean usually if it's ice cream it's just regular chocolate you know there's no chips in it 
but it's a good question. And I appreciate you've taken the time to ask it. Meanwhile, VSR Blizzard has lost another seven seconds to catch you on this lap. Uh, that's an issue there uh, between Mark and Beamer. Luckily, nothing has gone wrong. Closing in though on Beamer Black, P7, P6 is the battle for it. Now, will Mark be able to make any impression on Beamer Black? This takes a lot of pressure off Merchilago. You can see Merchilago has actually gone off himself though. Gets away with it. But uh, Mark is very close to the rear of Beamer Black, and this will allow Machilaga to just get a little bit of breathing room and get away, uh, depending on how much this Renault is able to close in on the Lamborghini. And you can already see the Lamborghini starting to pull away down the front start strinish fit. Front start strinish fit. <laughs> I'm trying that again. Down the front start finish straight. Uh, the Lamborghini very much quicker uh, than the Renault RSO one. I'm really sorry, my words are all there at the moment. I really don't know what is going on with my words. Really broken today, uh, but Mark still closing in on the red and green Lamborghini and seeing if he can um, close in. It's less than a second between these two now. Mark's definitely faster in the corners, but like we just said, anytime there's, there's any variant of straight line, then the Lamborghini does, does pull away, and these two are really closing in on Merchilago again. So Merchilago's really struggling, and I wonder if they couldn't fix all the damage in that pit stop, and that's why Mark and Beamer have been able to close in on him. They haven't been exactly battling, uh, but they have, they've been pulling each other along to um, Merchilago very well. Thank you, um, Niblo and uh, Carl Spencer, for the fucking kind words. <laughs> oh dear. Mark and Beamer Black then through the chicane they come. Mark does go wide. I, I work better on in high pressure situations, you know? Uh, when there's a lot of action going on, I'm able to shout it very quickly. But, but when there's not a lot going on, I don't know. Everything shuts down. <laughs> I apologize. It's been a lackluster performance from myself today. Beam of Black starting to pull away from Mark, though, once again. I need these boys to get into it so I can shout at them. But it does just look like a case that they're very equally matched on their pace. Uh, Mark has the edge in the corners, but Beam of Black looks to have quite a few more horses than that Lamborghini. Um, down the straights. However, Mark does get pretty good through that section, and it looked like Beamer Black did make a mistake. And uh, that's allowed Mark to close in more than he has been at any point so far during this battle. Now, is he going to be able to throw it down the inside? He's a little bit far back. He might be able to scare Beamer off the racing line, but uh, doesn't. Just stays behind him and uh, follows him through for another lap. Looking for gaps to gap. Between these three is, unfortunately, the closest gap we have anywhere on track at the moment. It's um, been a tricky one. So, closing in once again. Through the next section, this is where the Lamborghini starts to pull away a little bit and then that gives him the breathing room that he needs down the front start finish straight but meanwhile Beamer Black oh has gone very wide and that means Mark the Shark hits him I don't know why I keep calling him Mark the Shark that, I'm sorry I'm getting mixed up with the Cloud9 player um, Mark does hit the rear of Beamer Black through the chicane there all the case of Beamer Black going wide going over the curb and uh, just coming back on the track in front of Mark Mark really had nowhere to go Unfortunate for him. 14 minutes left in this race. It's not been the best race. It's probably been the slowest going race we've had so far this season, Imola. Uh, Imola is a very interesting track, I've found. Um, in terms of racing, Imola either really gives you an amazing race. Um, Imola can give you some of the best racing ever, or it can just be abysmal. Unfortunately, that is just the nature of the circuit, and it very much depends on how the start of the race goes, and it, it looks like the crash that took out Merchilago, um, Beamer Black, 
Mark were all involved in that crash. And these three were the guys that should have been battling up the front with uh, VSR Blizzard and Nemesis Racing. Fortunately, they did not be given the opportunity because of that. Beamer Black seriously closing in on Merchi Lager. Merchi Lager was really struggling at this phase in the race. Ever since he pitted, he's had no pace at all compared to the guys behind him. And he's done well to stay ahead as long as he has. Beamer Black, less than three seconds, but he loses a bit of time through there. Understeers, that's allowed Mark to get back on the tail of Beamer Black. Is he going to be able to do anything through the chicane? Doesn't look like it. Beamer Black goes a little wide again. That gives Mark a good opportunity. If he can get close enough, he will be able to make the move into the next corner. He's just got to absolutely take all slipstream that's available to him and just send it up the inside like a little bit of a Daniel Ricciardo. Beamer Black covers the inside well though. Saw it coming, felt it coming. Had covered that off. Mark didn't have that option available to him because Beamer placed his car on the apex. But now Mark's going to have the run out of the final corner and he's going to have a lot more slipstream. Uh, Beamer Black might still be picking up a little bit of slipstream from Merchi Alago ahead. And you can just see the Lamborghini pulls away, even with the uh, Renault so close to the rear end of the Lamborghini. It's just struggling. It, it's not being able to stay up with it because the Lamborghini just seems to have more horsepower. But through that first section, you can just see how much better the Renault is. And that gives you the difference. It looks like the Renault's got so much more downforce than the Lamborghini. And that's what gets him into these situations. Look how close he is almost pushing him through that corner. Surely he's got to have an opportunity going into this corner. The door's wide open. Looks to send it. The Lamborghini a lot later on the brakes, though. And it stays as it is for another lap. Unless Mark can get a good opportunity running through the infield sector. Meanwhile, VSR Blizzard found two seconds on Ketchy over the last few laps. It's not bad, but he's now losing time again. You can see in the top left. It's not been a bad race for VSR Blizzard. Been a good debut. Um, but he has struggled to keep up with Ketchy, as has anybody today. The man is on fire. Your racetrack is terrified. However, VSR Blizzard is the fastest man on the circuit at the moment with a 46.6. That's a good lap. And uh, that's probably the fastest lap we've seen so far this race. Is it too little too late? It could be. There's 11 minutes left. Uh, so there's still the opportunity if Ketchy makes a, mis a mistake. But it, it's very possible that Ketchy is just managing the pace. Very late on the brakes for Mark once again into the final sector realizes that he needs to get the move done before this start finish straight because it just isn't possible because the Lamborghini just drives away however the Lamborghini has found itself right behind the Bentley again so the Bentley starting to struggle starting to show cracks in the suit of armor is Beamer Black moments away from passing for P5 just got to remain calm and focus on where he's stronger. You can just see how much stronger that Renault is through the first sector. And that's just the case that the Renault has got so much downforce compared to these two guys in front of him. He can just stick to the road and get through like it's nobody's business. And Beamer Black is flashing Merchilago. Now, is that a distraction technique or is he genuinely annoyed with Beamer Black? Meanwhile, Beamer pulls to the inside line, looks for an opportunity, no way past on this occasion. That's going to allow Mark to close in, get calling him a shark earlier. Does he smell the blood of a Lamborghini in the background? Not quite. At least not through this sector, because he seems to be struggling through that sector to get the power down out of that corner. <laughs> <laughs> Merchi Alago goes wide out of the chicane. Sorry, I'm just reading some of the absolute chaos going on in the chat. Just want to clarify for Callum Spencer that no, Merchi Alago is definitely not flashing in that sense. It would be a very good distraction tactic if he did, though. I'm, I'm sure it would get the attention of, of Merchi Alago in the rear view. 
Uh, Biebenbach's actually had quite a rubbish last sector than he has done. He's actually quite far away from Murchielaga. Now, Galactic Skull 2 is into pit lane. Galactic Skull 2 drops from P4 down into P7. That promotes Murchielaga up to P4. Biebenbach P5, Mer uh, Mark P6. And Mark the Shark can get his jaws into Beamer Black. You can't hear me shaking my head, but I'm doing it. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm shaking it. If it's, if it's at the race gaps we've had, but Imola's just not provided for us. Meanwhile, Mark is very close, looking to the outside for a maneuver around the Lamborghini. This will be a good move if he can pull it off. He's got to get his nose ahead though, because he's just going to get squeezed out if he doesn't. Beamer Black doesn't squeeze him, and now it'll be a drag race up until the next corner. Renault versus Lamborghini. We've already seen the Lamborghini's faster in a straight line. How much can Mark do here? Because he's on the outside. He's got his nose ahead, but he is on the outside, and he's still on the outside. Mark the Shark is still there, and it's game over for the Shark. Tried to get his jaws into Beamer Black. Didn't happen for him. It was a good attempt by Mark, a valiant attempt, but there was no reward at the end of it. And it was all a case of positioning. He was on the outside at every opportunity there, and Beamer Black was just able to squeeze him out. And Mark will get a good run, but unless he sends it like Daniel Ricciardo, it's going to be a similar story of following through sector three and then being just out dragged by the bull in front of him down the start finish straight. Kechi still leads by 16.7, now eight seconds on an absolute flyer ahead of VSR Blizzard. Nemesis Racing in P3. 20 seconds back to Murchielago, who is three seconds varying down to two seconds ahead of these two that were watching the battle for fifth place for. Beamer Black does get the corner a little bit wrong there now. Is this Mark's next opportunity? Mark's so close, he's almost pushing the Lamborghini. Does he look to the inside to make a maneuver here, or is he going to stay behind? Looks like he's comfortable where he is, and he's going to try and move up the hairpin again, but he needs to get his nose on the inside this time, because we've seen what happens when you're on the outside. It looks like Beamer Black covers the inside. Is Mark going for a switchback, trying to get a better run for the inside? No, it goes a little bit wide, but they're really closing in on Merchilaga here. This could be a freeway battle in absolutely no time at all as we come into the hilly section of the infield. Look how close these guys are. Beamer Black goes a little bit wide, and it's going to be any marginal error that decides this battle. Down they come, Mark. Still there with a shout. Oh, we almost heard a car lose it there. I think Merchilaga almost lost the rear of that Bentley going through that section. Gets away with it though. Mark closing in on Beamer once again. Is he going to be able to throw it down the inside? No, he's not. Stays behind. Beamer goes wide. And that's going to allow Mark to do a switchback. Now Mark has the inside. This is the move that he needs to do. He needs to be on the inside for the next corner. Or it's just going to be the same old story to the finish line. And Mark realizes that. Really going for it. Giving it everything. But so does Beamer Black. Realizes this. Sends it like Daniel Ricciardo. Hook up the apex. Get the outside apex. Do not let that Lamborghini come back on the inside. And it does come back on the inside. And now it could very much be the same story going down into turn one. He's closer than he has been due to that. But is he going to be able to pull with it? Because the Lamborghini has just got so much more horsepower. You can see, even now, the Lamborghini drives away from the Renault. And that's going to be so frustrating for Mark. He had the move. Couldn't stop the Lamborghini coming back underneath him. And an unfortunate set of circumstances. Well, Mergelag is now up into a podium because Nemesis Racing has pitted as well. These guys, remember, all yet to pit. There is a mandatory one stop that these guys have to perform. We've had um, so much focus on this battle. We almost forgot entirely about that. These guys do have to make a mandatory pit stop. That's why Nemesis Racing and Galactic Skull 2 have pitted. However, these three all pitted for damage. So that could serve as their mandatory pit stop. So these guys, all on a technicality, have served their mandatory pit stop due to damage on the first lap. These guys could go to the end. They won't wait because Kedji's in the pits now, and they're a long way away from being able to top this man. Kedji comes into pit lane. We'll do the classic stop go. The pit crew will look like they're going to go to work. They don't, and they're going to release him very shortly. It's quite a long stop for a stop go, and that's just how far BSR Blizzard is behind. Meanwhile, we return to the battle. That is Mark versus Beamer versus Merchielago once again. 
and he's just got to get Beamer to go wide into that chicane again and he can try it again and Beamer does go a little bit wide not as wide as he did is the opportunity there for Mark Mark's right up behind him but it's not alongside like he was this time this time Mark going for the outside trying to find a way past to the inside but Beamer knows that he wants the inside Mark will have to look another way of doing it contact goes up and shoves the Lamborghini up in the rear air gets away with it that could have been an airplane accident. They get away with it for now, but there was contact. A little bit of impatience starting to seep in during this race. And the order continues as it is. Meanwhile, Kedchi has completed his stop. I just want to clarify this. Kedchi has completed his mandatory stop and gained a second in doing so. So good was Kedchi's in-lap. He gained a second on BSR Blizzard who is still to pit. Absolute stellar performance from Kedji today, really in a class of his own. Very reminiscent to Nibbler on Sunday in um, the Spanish Grand Prix for the Formula One series. The chat starting to announce the Bop It theme tune as uh, we get ready to hope that one of these is going to send it again. But Mark has really fallen off the rear of Beamer. Now, is this going to allow Beamer to get on with a task at hand with dealing with the Bentley in front of him? Mark's really dropped off ever since that move hasn't paid off. And Beamer's going to try his best to close in and pass. But he's got to do it soon because we've only got two minutes and 40 seconds to go. BSR Blizzard needs to start thinking about a pit stop in these next two laps as well. He hasn't pitted and will get disqualified is he do if he does not make that mandatory stop. These three already have served their stop because they took repairs for damage on the first lap and that counted as their mandatory stop. So these guys can go to the end. Meanwhile, BSR Blizzard needs to pit and he doesn't have long to do it. In two minutes, that, that's two laps at most, uh, depending on where they are on the track. VSR Blizzard doesn't pit. Does VSR Blizzard know he needs to pit? Have I missed him pitting? I'm really not sure, but I don't feel as if VSR Blizzard has pitted. If anyone in the chat can correct me, then I apologize, but I don't think VSR Blizzard has pitted and he's, he's, he's running out of time to do that pit really has run out of time, really left it late. He must have pitted at some point. I think he must have tried to undercut Kedchi, because I feel the gap would be a lot smaller if he hadn't pitted already. VSR uh, Blizzard must have pitted and we missed it, because the gap would have been a lot smaller. Meanwhile, these guys have found the rear of one VSR Blizzard, so VSR Blizzard did just pit. Okay, we can confirm VSR Blizzard has just come out of the pits then. And has got himself in the battle for P2 and 3 and 4. So I think just as we were talking about it, VSR's made his pit stop and is now watching these two do battle behind him. Beamer Black still looking for a way past Murchielaga who wants to see if he can challenge VSR Blizzard in these dying laps. Where is, where is Kedji on the track? Are we going to get another lap of this? Um, it looks like we'll comfortably get at least one more lap of this race. VSR Blizzard goes wide though, and that's going to allow Merchilago to get in on the fray. Merchilago on the inside for the next chicane. Is he going to take P2 away from the Mercedes? Yes, he is. What could VSR Blizzard do about it? He's on the outside line, so not a hell of a lot. He sits in, and he's just going to wait for a mistake from the Bentley to get back past him. Does he have the better acceleration between himself and the Bentley? Yes, he does. Does Merchilago cover the inside? Merchilago should be a lot more aggressive on that inside line. No, he hasn't. Oh, they're all going wide into the final section. They all just get away with it. Now is Beamer Black going to take VSR Blizzard off the podium as we get ready to start the final lap of Imola. Chaz claims VSR has not pitted. VSR could be facing disqualification if he hasn't pitted. The chat claims he hasn't pitted. I'm not sure, but either way, he's under a lot of pressure from the Lamborghini Hurricane of Beamer Black, who's desperate to take P3 away from him, shows himself to the inside line, doesn't outbreak him. VSR Blizzard stays, but makes a mistake in the next corner. Beamer Black will have the better traction through the next sector then, and will prepare to go wheel to wheel. And it's been a slow burn of a race, but it's all blowing up in the final lap. Nowhere past there. VSR Blizzard struggling. Really struggling on these final laps. Mark starting to close back in. If there's an accident, then Mark will inherit P3. 
Beamer Black looking at a podium, staring a podium in the face, or the rear bumper, as we were going to call it. If VSR has not pitted, he will be disqualified at the end of this lap. Beamer Black is pushing on, really looking for a way to take this podium away from VSR. And if he is going to get disqualified, we have Chazza, who was in the race, claims that VSR has not pitted. If that is true, then he's going to get disqualified and taken off the podium anyway. And Beamer Black will get it that way, but I'm sure he'll want to do it on merit because he won't have any idea that VSR hasn't pitted. He won't have been concentrating on that at all. He'll be doing his own race. But VSR does get a better run, a much better run than Murcielago. And they're going to go into the final sector side by side for the final time. Meanwhile, Kedji wins the Imola race. What an absolute stonker of a drive. Murcielago still on the inside. Is it going to be Conta here? Murcielago on the inside. VSR on the outside. Now, what can the Lamborghini do? Can he go to the inside on the final corner? Yes, he can. Does it? They bang doors, shoves him off the racing line. Line, and the run to the line we'll see Mergelago pick take p2 beamer black take p3 vsr blizzard loses the podium on the final corner but faces disqualification anywhere for not pitting during that race across the line they come we'll see what the stewards say vsr moves up into p2 according to the standings uh, we'll have to see what that's all about but i'm pretty sure Mergelago did take p2 beamer black p3 did these guys have penalties and these guys may have had penalties of some kind if that order is to be believed, but, but visually we saw Murchilago take P2, Beamer Black take P3. We'll have to see what happened there. Let's see what the final results are. It says VSR Blizzard finishes P2. Did those guys have penalties? Yes, they did. Beamer Black had a one second penalty, Mark had a two second penalty. Murchilago drops to sev seventh. With a 30 second penalty. And Kevin Jacobs 8th. What? What has just happened? Um, what has just happened is that we've made a lot of work for the stewards. And I'm sure they're going to have a very busy Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Figuring out what has just gone on in that race. Did VSR pit? Did he not? We don't know. Kedchi, the driver of the day. Takes another dominant display in the Mercedes. What an excellent display from that man. Really earned the victory here today. Extends his championship advantage by a, by a lot. He really takes it away today and uh, starts to make a foothold and put one hand on the trophy. Uh, join us again next time then for Nemesis Online Racing F1 Series on Sundays. We're coming to you with round number six of... Um, uh, sorry, round number seven, I believe, or round number six, it, it, or round number five. I'm really not sure. I apologize. But we'll be going to Monaco next time out in the NORL F1 series. And, of course, you can catch round number six of the FIA GT3 series next Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your evening. Hope you enjoyed the racing. And uh, until Sunday, I'll catch you again. Take it easy. Bye-bye.